Okay, I love how you do this. You. A minute ago, these were here hanging on here with this screw in and this screw out. Now they're hanging on here with this screw in and this screw out. Because Explain I that the methodology. Screws and now I'm doing the top screws. Yeah, but when I do these, I put the top screw in first because you can flip it up like this and put it in without this edge of the screwdriver. Yeah, I clearly didn't think ahead on that, did I? <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's the first time Bob's ever admitted he was wrong. <laughs> and we got to do it on camera. <laughs> yeah. All right. Today's episode is probably going to ruffle some feathers, and that's not our intention. This is an all stop it episode. They've just built up, right? I think I have 13 or 14 stop it's. I've been taking notes in my phone and like I lay awake at night and just toss and turn, stop it, stop it. So I figured I'd get them off my shoulders, get them off my chest, get out there in the stop it world. So get ready for a full episode of nothing but stop it. <laughs> So this stop it starts with, actually it starts with wheel manufacturers because they're responsible for the stop it that I'm gonna end this with. But uh, basically because vehicles went to IFS and wheel companies started building different backspacing wheels, um, stopped focusing on wheels that fit solid front axle vehicles, solid live axle vehicles, all the R&D, all the new cool wheels won't fit. They won't fit Land Cruisers. I'll show you the science behind that in just a second. But there's almost no aftermarket wheel available except for the same old school 15 inch wheels that we've known about forever that you can put on a Land Cruiser. So people go out and they buy aftermarket wheels and then they buy wheel spacers so that they'll fit. Wheel spacers are bad. They are bad. Stop using them. There's two kinds. They're both bad. Let me show you why. So these, we, this is both kinds of wheel spacers sort of smashed together so I can illustrate. First kind of wheel spacer, is this kind, just like a slim aluminum ring. People will use these all the time, especially on the front wheels, uh, to, if there's like a brake caliper clearance problem with their wheel. The problem with that is these smash a little bit and over just a short period of time, the lug nuts start to loosen up and then your wheel can fall off, right? This kind of wheel spacer is even worse. This kind of wheel spacer is held on to the original lug studs with one set of lug nuts hidden deep down in this crevasse. And then the wheel actually goes on the second set of lug nuts that are also into the aluminum. Problem with that is these don't loosen up, but these do. And you don't know it because they're behind your wheel and nobody ever takes their wheel off to check these like they should. And so this kind of wheel spacer I have seen I don't know, half a dozen times, maybe more in person and heard of at least 10 or 20 others of cases of people's wheels falling off, uh, sometimes off-road, sometimes on the highway, usually after off-roading because they're using these goofy wheel spacers. Uh, I don't even know why these are legal. These are bad. Don't use wheel spacers. You have to use the wheels that'll fit and unfortunately there's not many choices. So the next stop it is actually for the wheel manufacturers. Stop neglecting solid front axle cars. You guys are building some really sweet wheels for modern trucks, but there's still a big market out there for classic four-wheel drives. In this case, this is a wheel that I designed um, that's made specifically with a three and three quarter inch back spacing for a Land Cruiser, but they're custom built, right? Uh, this aluminum wheel is 950 bucks. Most people don't have that in their budget to spend on wheels. So wheel manufacturers, stop ignoring the classic car market and build us some three and three quarter, three and a half inch back spacing wheels. 17, 16 inches for our beloved four wheel drives. He said stop, he said stop restoring Snowcat. It belongs to a dear friend. Dude, and how cool is it? Tucker Snowcats are um, iconic. I mean, it's a piece of history right here. And it belonged to the US Navy even. I'm not sure why, but uh, you know, he needed it done and he didn't want anybody to do it but us because Probably people would think of them more like a tractor and restore them likewise, but we want it to look good, so that thing's gonna be sweet. We'll come back, we'll do an episode on it in the snow, maybe. That'd be cool. Pulling out all anchors. So this stop it is about a shortcut I see in restorations all the time. As a matter of fact, it's one of the things that I look for when somebody asks me to evaluate a vehicle for them, like on Bring a Trailer or on some auction site. First thing that pops out to me when I see a vehicle, you know somewhat from a distance are random extra holes 
that were not filled properly and then painted over. And it happens all of the time. It is hard if you're not a Land Cruiser expert or an expert on whatever vehicle that you're restoring to know exactly which holes are supposed to be there. But that's when you gotta do the research, right? You gotta do the research and figure it out. You can almost always tell a homemade drilled hole versus a factory hole. And you gotta figure out which ones are not supposed to be there and you gotta fill them properly. So when it's like this, hard to tell, right? There's a lot of holes on this. Who knows which ones are supposed to be there? Well, you know, you gotta get in there. You'll see on this, we have all kinds of places where the holes are crossed out. Some of these holes are factory holes that we just know that we're not gonna use, but there are also holes that the previous owner, um, you know, over generations of years and years and years of people modifying it, have drilled in there, mounting things. Those holes have to be welded up anywhere, on the dash, on the floor, and especially on the exterior of the vehicle. Stop painting over holes that aren't supposed to be there. It ruins your Land Cruiser. Let's go look at one. So here's an example of a pretty nicely restored FJ40 uh, done in Arizona, I believe. These holes, I can tell by the pattern of them, are for a factory uh, OEM antenna, um, the newer style antenna that would be on an FJ40, but one of those nonetheless. But the problem is, it's at an angle. Th those would have been mounted up here, first of all, and vertical. This is at uh, some strange angle, sort of to match the windshield frame. But uh, this car doesn't even have a stereo or provisions for a stereo. So these should have been welded up before this paint job. It really compromised the integrity of the entire restoration, and there's more. So the antenna holes, I mean, I guess I could see why they left those, because they thought it might need an antenna. But what on earth are these things from? I mean, you could definitely tell that those random holes that are drilled crooked are not supposed to be here. Whoever did the bodywork, the metalwork, and then the bodywork, and the paint for this should have never let that happen. You guys need to stop it. But wait, there's more. On the floor of this Land Cruiser, there's some more random holes. I just thought of something. How do you tell if the holes are supposed to be there or not? I mean, if you don't have another perfect example car to look at, I'll give you some hints. Number one, the holes that are drilled by people are almost never round. Sometimes they almost have a triangular appearance. And OEM holes are always going to be symmetrical or in some sort of uh, precision arrangement. They're never gonna be kind of random here, here, here. So the holes on this floor of this FJ40 are definitely random. They're here and here and here. They're on the driver's side and the passenger side. And the problem is how much work it is to fix these things correctly. I mean, if the guy wanted us to fix these, we would have to grind down the holes to bare metal, weld them up, grind the welds and do bodywork on both the top side and the bottom side, and then to really do it right, respray the whole underside of the car, respray at least sections of the underside and the inside. That's gonna take a ton of disassembly. I mean, it's thousands of dollars. It's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to fix all those things on this, so you could have done it right the first time. That's why I have to stop it. Anyway, what's happening, Eric? Hey, I'm touching my paint job. Oh, oh, why, what, what, what did I do? Touching the, don't touch brand new paint, it's bad. The sand, is there sand and stuff on it that acts as, that acts as sandpaper and scratches it just by a little touch. Oh, you mean so just my clean hand can ruin this fender? Oh yeah, can ruin it real good. You shouldn't ever touch a fresh paint, you shouldn't ever touch any nice paint job. Unless this thing was surgically sterile clean, which it's not, Whatever dirt and dust is on top of that is basically like sandpaper. And by leaning on it or setting things on it or even brushing up against it, you're scratching, putting micro scratches in the paint. I watch people at car shows and all over the place go and lean on vehicles and this shouldn't be touched by anything except for if it's foamed up and wet, and like a soft chamois that's been made sure that it's clean. Don't touch fresh paint jobs. Don't look at them and go, what's that? And try to swipe your finger on them. Every time you're doing that, you're messing up the paint job. Stop it. Stop it. We came out to the yard to try to find a stop it, and I spy two of them almost right next to each other. Let's check them out. I bet you guys saw this one coming. The old upside down bezel. I mean, come on, people. How many times does this have to be talked about as a stop it, not just by me, but by everybody in the Land Cruiser community? This thicker part of the bezel goes on top, and I can prove it. From right here in front, you can see that this Toyota logo is not centered. 
If this was flipped upside down, this would be equidistant from the top and the bottom, giving it a much better visual appearance and the iconic classic Land Cruiser look. If your bezel looks like this, run outside immediately and fix it right now. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, don't sleep one wink, don't even drink water, no urinating, don't go to the bathroom, nothing. Flip your bezel right side up, stop it. And while we're at it, this one's not upside down, but black, black. That looks horrible. Don't ever paint your bezel black. This is supposed to be white, even though it is on a white cruiser. They are a little bit different shade for contrast, but black bezels make me want to vomit in my mouth, just like the last stop. And if your bezel is black, please correct it before, before I see it anyway. Correct that black bezel. You stop it. You, stop it. <laughs> you do a good job. You really do. Don't you think he does Stop a good job? <laughs> hey, audience, comment. Oh, hell no. Comment below. <laughs> comment below if you think Bob does a good job. I mean, at, at anything at all. Just like if you know Bob and you think he does some things right, just put it at the bottom. Yeah. I was wondering if you had any topics you'd like to talk about today. I just gave you one. I forgot already. <laughs> Stop recording me. Oh. No, I mean we'll get stop it. I mean I mean stop it that will that will make people uncomfortable and angry because they have it on their cruiser. So that's not, that's not what we're trying to accomplish. Like we just did one stop painting over random holes that aren't supposed to be there. And we did stop touching dusty car. Stop yeah. touching fresh paint. Stop stepping on running boards when they're painted. And they don't and the car doesn't belong to you. And the car doesn't belong to you. That's a for us, though. So. Yeah. If you own the car and you paid a lot of money for it, you can step on it and yeah. all you want. Let, that's why one of our sayings stopping. is, let the customer create their own patina. Yeah. But really, why patina anything? Step over the running well, Why have the running board if you're not going to step on it? Like I said, if you own the car, you're welcome to step on it. It's just for us. OK. <laughs> that's a leather lousy stomping. Remember what I said earlier about Bob doing a good job? Please? I told you. <laughs> I tried to tell you. <laughs> I know Eddie's working on a stop it. Let's check it out. Hey, Land Cruisers came with gauges, so stop putting aftermarket gauges under your factory gauges. They could be made to work. He's right. You see that all the time. Like some kind of AutoZone gauge stuck under the dash. In this case, what, coolant temp and oil pressure. But yeah. there's gauges, the instruments are actually really, really reliable. Probably just a cinder went bad and that's why they stuck those other gauges under there. That's horrible. Kind of ruins the Land Cruiser, luckily. It is going to fix those gauges and we're going to take those out of there, save this Land Cruiser some embarrassment. So stop it. <laughs> this, is, this is a really cool cruiser, but it is another one of those South American imports and I, I think you guys know how I feel about those. So let's just say, let's stop using your old mud flaps as floor mats. <laughs> stop buying sort of non-quality things without knowing it, right? If you're gonna buy a Land Cruiser or any classic vehicle, do some research, enlist the help of experts, call me, call any expert in the field, have them professionally inspected, go look at them in person, do anything, but stop lowering your standards or not having standards and buying like junk and getting ripped off. You gotta stop that, right? There's too much of it going on in the industry. There's too many Land Cruisers getting sort of uh, misrepresented and sold and then sold again and then sold again. All we need are educated buyers. Um, and if you're not educated, get educated before you spend your money. Stop buying the really bad stuff. I think you're totally right. There is way too many hacks. There are, right? Like Absolutely. People out there stuff up. Get her done. <laughs> yeah. and, and then you end up oh, no. ruining something. You're making it so much harder to fix that it's trash. Or, it's an epidemic. I'm going through it right now on this building that I'm putting up at my house and because of my broken leg, I had to hire people to come help do the roofing. And not up to Jeremiah standards, not up to right. any really good. It's a mess. Stop being a hack. Absolutely. Speaking of not being a hack, and this is completely related to a stop that we did earlier, what on earth right. are you doing? Uh, custom offset wheels and rims, precision. As precise as we can get it, huh? As, as we can with what we got. <laughs> we used we used to have a machine shop. We have a lathe that'll turn these, um, but we used to have a machine shop do that for us, and they were never right. Speaking of hacks, 
I mean, you'd get wheels with like a one inch of run out, right? Yeah. From a machine shop, which is pretty bad. So now we're sort of doing it the old fashioned way, but but with Ian's expert measuring, Fine too. they're gonna turn out good. So these are 15 inch um, wheels that with Land Cruiser centers, eight inch wide though. So this guy can have 35 with like a, what back spacing did you get us? Two and a quarter inch. With two and a quarter inches. So they'll be nice and stable uh, for that kind of off-road look that he's wanting. So good job on that and good job pointing out. Don't be a hack, stop it. Don't be a hack, stop it. And while we're at it, do you get on any of the forums at all? No. No, me neither, no. me no. neither. Stay away from it. Yeah, so I me too. You know why I stay away from the forums? Because there's way too many <laughs> on the forums, that's why. <laughs> Don't have to read with these. Stop me and <laughs> on forums. Because there's a wealth of information there but it's buried amongst an even greater wealth of disinformation protected by a bunch of <laughs> So if you're on a forum, be nice. Be nice to the people who are just joining. Be nice to the people that ask the stupid questions because you used to ask stupid questions too. Stop being and <laughs> on forums. Stop it. So it's so bad, it's below the board parts in the scrap metal bin. That's how bad it is. What am I talking about? The propeller. What's the propeller? I think it was yeah. I don't want transfer case mounted mounting point for engine conversions that sold it. The one that looks like an airplane propeller, the bolts to the back of a three speed and four speed Land Cruiser transfer case. I can't believe it, but people are still using those. They, have some fun. they crack your transfer case. They don't have enough isolation. They cause a bunch of vibration. There's a hundred better ways to do it. If you have one of those big, heavy, three eighths inch thick propellers and you're getting ready to do an engine swap, stop it. Stop with the propeller. Unless you're an airplane. This is the jet age now. We use jet powered transfer case cross members, not propellers. We gotta find one. Alex I'll get a picture. Asked if you want to have fun. I, oh, I want to have fun. Let's, let's four, there's four BT60 out there. Does it have the propeller? No. Oh, it's it's ours though. The one we did like forever and ever ago. Uh -huh. Oh, you're one. You want to talk about motor mounts, don't you? And cross members. Oh, uh, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, 20 years ago, we our standards weren't where they are these days. I mean, we've. Geez, man, the last five years. Six years, we've upped the quality and the design of everything. But I look back at something we did 20 years ago. There's some embarrassments, but 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 there's people still doing those things today. The things that we were bad at 20 years ago, people are thinking are doing today, thinking they're good at it. That's that's why we're making the stop. It's. I saw a. Uh, I was gonna say it's still running and driving. It is still running and driving. Yeah, and you know what that guy? I mean, he's used the out of that. I can't swear anymore because of that. I got enough beeps already with the forum stop it, but yeah, he's used to, I think he's put like 100,000 miles on it. And now we're going to do a body op restoration and undo some of the hackery that's on there from us 20 years ago. But that's why we're doing this. We're trying to enlighten people and educate people to... Have you like, told Bob yet? Uh, yeah, I'm sure Bob knows. He knows all about it. I want, I want to see if he knows he has to peel all that line himself. I, I saw... That's... that's um, Easy liner. That's gonna come off like, like a facial. Um, no, I want to talk about. I saw this uh, Instagram post from this shop that's building a 60 series, 80 series uh, combination, which I would refer to as a 60 series on an 80 series chassis, as you know from uh, two episodes ago. Anyway, with a mitered square tubing crossmember, which is probably arguably worse than the propeller. Like, square tubing doesn't have much automotive use, right? This one's flat. It's flat. Stop using structural steel on automotive. No channel or angle iron, ever. Channel and angle iron, take them off the table. You heard me say that, but square tubing, sparingly. Very sparingly, maybe as a basis for rock slides. Never on a bumper. Is there any place else you could use square tubing? 45. Yeah, if you turn it on a 45 so it looks like a diamond. Yeah. Ranch bumper? I don't know. <laughs> I hear Eddie laughing. I took my square tubing and I turned it on a 45 so it looks like a diamond. Now that's a fancy bumper.
Matt says he has a surprise stop it, and he's not even going to tell me what it is. So let's let's go. Let's just do this. Okay. This is my surprise stop it for this uh, episode. And this one, usually a, a stop it is uh, directed to the general public. Uh, this one's going to be directed right at one person, in, you know, individual, and that individual is Jeremiah. Uh oh. So here we go. My stop it is. Um, when someone comes to you and says, will you restore my antique snowcat to like new condition? The proper response to that is, we're actually a Land Cruiser shop and we're just not equipped to do snowcats and it's gonna throw a big wrench in the process of everything else we're doing. Um, so for this episode, Jeremiah, stop it. <laughs> what snowcat? <laughs> I thought this was an FJ40. What? Yeah, yeah I think he, he, he's got a point of contention here. This may possibly be the last remaining FJ40 snow crawler. The, <laughs> they're rumored to be existed. We never knew if they existed. Here's some evidence. Yeah, we found one metric bolt, so we know it's Toyota. Yeah, Toyota all the way. I can accept it. I can accept the stop it. It definitely has taken some time, but like I said, dear, dear friend, very important thing, and I kind of snuck it. I have a hard time saying no. The stop it should have been Jeremiah stop not saying no. Or, yeah. Stop saying no. No, stop not saying no. no. Yeah. Stop, stop not saying no. It's a double negative no. that good. works. Stop right. not saying no. Right. I should say no more often. I say yes to all kinds. Of, I've said yes to worse than this. <laughs> this is true. What's the worst thing he's ever said? No, he's ever said yes I think you, should, uh, kind of I think you should visit with Bob about that one <laughs> yeah. and get his input because that's that's the guy that has right all now, of his This training. is what's on the top of everything. Oh, Bob, yeah. we need to stop it. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> what is the worst? What is the worst thing that wasn't a Land Cruiser that Jeremiah said yes to? Oh, the list goes on and on. You mean like the absolute worst? Next to this, I've done horse trailers, tractors, you name it, snow cats, snowmobiles, uh, vans. I've done. Uh, what was a sportsmobile? <laughs> I can't pin it down to like one thing. It's, there's just so many. <laughs> so he needs to say, you, you need to maybe, say, maybe stop. the tractor I did. Could be the tractor. <laughs> do you think Chip Foose? Do you think Chip Foose is like just limiting himself to just one kind of car? No, he, Chip restores also all of the high-end How many, end how many shop tractors do you think Chip Foose is restored? I don't know. Chip, have you done a tractor? <laughs> I'll find I bet out. it'd be badass if he did it, though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he's ever done a snowcat, though. I'm going to yeah, go with making, tractor. Making history. <laughs> making history one bizarre piece of equipment at a time. And Bob out. <laughs> okay, so this is a self-stop it. I don't want to say it very loud because it's on something we did. It's embarrassing. So about 20 years ago, we helped this individual that owns this cruiser, or used to own it, build it for him. Now, we didn't do everything, but we did some of the stuff. And among those would be this roll cage. So if you look around, pretty good looking roll cage, kind of uh, the same style cage that we build today, except for the A-hoop right here, the A-hoop. This is before we knew any better. And if you look what we did, now this is a 20 year old mistake. Oop, oop, oop. You cannot roll the window up or down with the door closed because we put the A-hoop too far back. So that's a stop it. Stop, well, we stopped doing that a long time ago, but make sure you check that if you're building your own roll bar because it's an easy mistake to make. But I also want to show you something cool that if you already made the mistake and you don't want to change your whole roll bar, we have a solution for that. So let's get into it. So if you don't know how to take these door handles off, it's super easy. You just get a rag, do what I just did. You'll see that that popped up the clip that holds these on. Of course, I don't have a pocket screwdriver or anything. What do I have? I have Todd's mic thing, I have my cell phone. I got nothing. Oh, I got it, I got it with nothing. That's how you take these door handles off. And we make a 3D printed version of the factory door handle that is, you guessed it, shorter. Shorter because uh, somebody's Land Cruiser needed, you know, had the same problem and needed a solution that didn't involve a whole new cage. So what you do, is you get two pairs of needle nose pliers and you can squeeze these tabs that hold that knob in there like we've already done with this one. 
This pops right into the new 3D printed handle. Clip goes on. Easier, easier said than done. Handle, but will it fit? We don't know. All right, it's shorter. Moment of truth on camera, unrehearsed. Will it work? Look, this is hard to do, I'm gonna roll myself up. Oh yeah, I can roll the window up with a 3D printed shortened door handle. If you need one of those, they're on our online store. If you don't, it's because you put your roll bar in the right spot and you don't need to stop it. Speaking of this vehicle, it's for sale on our website. Let's make it the feature vehicle of today's episode. This Land Cruiser needs some work, but it's cool because we kept all the Toyota DNA. It's got a three, uh, three FE fuel injected Toyota straight six, and it's got an H42 four speed with a rock box on the back of it. Hence the three shifters. Um, and that's a four to one extra transfer case. And then um, the four speed case behind that. So it's kind of set up for off-road and gearing. It's also got front and rear ARB air lockers in a cage. It's got these, uh, I don't remember who makes these seats. It's got these horrible racing seats, which need to be thrown away and featured in another stop it. And as so we can go back to FJ40 seats in this, but other than that, uh, the interior of this rig's pretty clean. Um, let's check out the outside. Like I said, if you're interested, I'll even throw in a set of uh, shortened door handles so that you can roll the windows up and down. This 1976 FJ40 was built like too many of them were in the you know 1990s with this sort of off-road look. Uh, the aftermarket wheels and the fender flares and the um, you know, not so cool custom front and rear bumpers are all products of what the style was back then. And now, of course, everybody wants things a lot more authentic. Good news is, is this Land Cruiser could get there pretty easily. Um, what I would do to it, if it were mine, is I would replace these wheels and tires with OEM wheels in like a 331050. I would definitely get rid of the aftermarket bucket seats and go back with a set of FJ40 seats. Maybe factory front bumper and rear bumperettes uh, to complete that sort of OEM look. But you know, the paint job's held up pretty well. And um, other than the top, clear coat's peeling on the top, but that could be corrected pretty easily. Uh, 3FE, H42, solid drivetrain. And then of course it's got the dual transfer case and ARB lockers. Um, heck, it's got a Warren 8274 uh, bumper in the front, so I guess it should get one of our replica front winch bars. Anyway, make the whole thing look a lot more stock. It's already solid, uh, pretty stock Toyota stuff. It would be a sweet FJ40. Check it out on the website, resurrectionlandcruisers.com. So I hope we didn't offend anybody with all those stoppets. I mean, it's hard. I know that some of the things that we pick on are things that other guys are doing every day, but these, these really are meant to be educational uh, and poke fun at a little, uh, you know, some situations at the same time. Uh, hopefully they help and uh, feel free to uh, comment below if I offended you. Thanks for watching this episode, Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. Stop it, stop it. <laughs>